The Physician Assistant Program at the Southern Illinois University School of Medicine utilizes the problem-based learning format as the basis of its medical education curriculum. Problem-based learning is innovative and challenging. Innovative because it is a new way of using clinical information to help students learn. Challenging because it requires the medical teacher to utilize facilitating and supportive techniques rather than directive and didactive ones. For the student, PBL emphasizes the application of knowledge and skills to the solution of problems rather than the recall of facts. It is an approach much favored by curriculum planners in new and more progressive medical schools. PBL is concerned with both what students learn and how they learn it and uses specially prepared problems, usually written cases derived from clinical experience as the basis of the curriculum. Okay, so are you guys ready to start the new case? Go ahead. So who wants to read and who wants to write? Um, I'll read. I'll read. So we have Samuel Johnson, a retired 78 year old former. In a problem-based learning curriculum, students develop the skills necessary to find and critically interpret up-to-date research on real-life medical issues. So what are some differentials for change of behavior? So I think dementia, and that's just because it can cause any change in behavior. Alzheimer's maybe because um, it can cause atrophy of the brain and also cause change in behavior. Stroke. Parkinson's disease. Uh, Neurosif. In problem-based learning, Meningitis. learners are progressively given more and more responsibility for their own education and become increasingly independent of the Louis teacher for dementia. their education. Problem-based learning anymore. produces independent learners who will continue to learn in their future careers as physician assistants. The series of problems encountered by learners with this process make up the curriculum. The problems are put together as a group to stimulate learning of content appropriate to the course. In the problem-based learning process, learners characteristically learn far more in areas relevant to their personal needs. The learning group is comprised of six to nine learners and a group facilitator. As the group members work together to problem solve and learn, they also acquire collaborative or team learning skills, which are important abilities for working in any healthcare environment. The principal role of the teacher in problem-based learning is that of a facilitator or educational coach and to provide the educational materials and guidance that facilitates learning. Uh, what questions do you want to ask for the history? How about um, Q2, onset? I don't know how long he's had this. All right, so under onset, it says about five months ago, I began to notice that I would forget things. Um, about that time, I sometimes said mean things to After the wife, chief complaint is presented, the students rich, brainstorm and work together to generate a broad differential diagnosis list. In the problem-based learning process, oh, learners encounter a problem and attempt to solve it with information white, they already possess, allowing them to appreciate what they already know. The group reasons yeah, through the presenting it. problem by asking questions about the patient's history, referring back to their differential yep. list to rule in or rule out those hypotheses. So based on the information that was gathered in the history, let's go ahead and refine the differentials. Um, just say up arrow, down arrow, and why, depending on what's the most likely versus least likely from what you've gathered so far. Well, we can probably up arrow dementia just because his age, we still can't roll it out yet. So side arrow UTI, mm -hmm. and why are we doing that? Just until we get his vitals so we can actually see if he has a fever. You don't necessarily have to have a fever to have a UTI. We should probably start out with um, getting his vital signs so we can see The students are able to perform physical exams on the patient to help further narrow down their differential pressure, list. A list of what needs to be learned in order to complete the problem tasks called learning issues is formulated throughout the group session. They also identify what they need to learn to better understand the problem and how to resolve it. I think his blood pressure is a little bit high. What's a normal blood pressure level for a 78-year-old male? Didn't they just change the recommendations? I think it's a little higher now. That sounds like a learning issue. How about we look at his thyroid? Um, E52. Neck is symmetric, without masses or scars. Um, small, non-tender, soft, mobile tonsillar nodes are noted. So what do you guys think of the physical exam finding for the thyroid? I don't really know what a normal thyroid exam would find. So, should we make it an LI? Yeah. So. What labs or diagnostics do you want to order to evaluate this patient? 
We could get a CBC to look for infection. I found CBC in the book. Since modern medicine is constantly changing and updating the understanding, evaluation, and treatment of disease, as well as strategies for prevention and health promotion, healthcare providers need to be lifelong learners. We could get thyroid studies, look at TSH. Okay, so TSH is T1-83. And what's the normal values for a TSH? I don't know. So we should probably put that on the board for a learning issue. Yeah. So based on the history and physical examination findings, plus the lab results that we have so far, what are your top differentials for this patient? I think that depression should be one of our top differentials just because he's expressed that he's been crying, he's been going out to the barn by himself and just kind of secluding himself. So I think that that is a big one. I think we should keep dementia up there as a top one as well. He's had altered mental status and he started gambling, which kind of seems like it could be a dementia. Um, he also stated that he was gaining weight, so I think hypothyroidism maybe should be a top differential. Um, he also, on his physical exam findings, had some dry skin. So, so nice work today, guys. Um, go ahead and split up your LIs and we'll meet on Wednesday. I'll do thyroiditis. Um, I can pick thyroid physiology. Okay, I will do goiter. Students okay, use self-directed study to research their assigned learning issues. Once they have worked with the problem as far as possible and identified what they need to learn, the learners engage in self-directed study to research the information needed by finding and using a variety of information sources. Books, journals, reports, online information, and a variety of people with appropriate areas of expertise. In this way, learning is personalized to the needs and learning styles of the individual. Welcome back. Um, why don't we start by having someone give us a, a summary of the case that we opened on Monday. Samuel Johnson, a 78-year-old male who came in complaining of a change in behavior five months ago. He noticed that... He Based on your research that you did on your learning issues... At the group's next session, students discussed their learning issues amongst their group members. The learners went, then return to the problem and apply what they learned to their work with the problem in order to more fully understand and resolve the problem. They develop flowcharts and concept maps as a way to synthesize the basic science and clinical concept. Synthesis of information gained throughout discussion shapes the action plan, are things that need to be done in order to complete the task. The group orders lab tests and imaging to help further narrow the problem list. Once history, physical examination, and diagnostics are complete, the group works together to commit to their final problem list. Finally, a treatment plan and patient education topics are formulated for the patient. So we, I know we got the TSH level and it was high, but you said something about the thyroid not functioning. Problem-based learning is a motivating way to learn as learners are involved in active learning. Working with real cases and what they have to learn in their study is seen as important and relevant to their own lives. So if that's not happening, TSH is going to keep being produced and it'll be high just because there's not enough of this in circulation. Okay. Like I was shown over there, since those levels are low, there's no negative feedback, so his thyroid's not putting out enough of the thyroid hormone. So it's a thyroid problem. Yeah. So let's take a final look at the differential diagnoses list and based on the physical examination, um, history, and uh, the results that you've gathered from the lab findings, um, what is the final diagnosis for Samuel Johnson that you guys would say? Um, I would say hypothyroidism. We have um, up arrowed on our list. Um, because of his TSH levels, they were elevated and his T4 was low and that usually indicates that the thyroid isn't functioning properly. I agree. And he's shown some symptoms that could be suggested of hypothyroidism. Um, the changes in behavior, he's had some weight gain, so I also agree with that. And for thinking hypothyroidism, we need to replenish those uh, thyroid hormone levels. So we need to give them a level thyroxine, but I'm not sure on the dosages. I've got the LI on levothyroxine here, and it says for an elderly patient, we need to start at 25 micrograms. So you diagnose Samuel Johnson with hypothyroidism. What's some patient education you would give him? I think a big patient ed on this case is compliance with his medication. We need to make sure he's taking it at the right time each day and with a full glass of water, I think 30 minutes before he eats any meals. Yeah, and I also read that um, there are medications such as iron, calcium carbonate, H2 antagonists, and PPIs 
um, that he may be taking that can interfere with the absorption of the Synthroid. So just making him aware that he shouldn't take any other medications for two to four hours before he takes that or after. He's going to have to take medicine for life because it's incurable, but we can treat it. Um, let's just take a little time to discuss the group process and give some feedback um, on yourself and how you did and also how the group worked together. After they have finished their problem work, the learners assess themselves and each other to develop skills in self-assessment and the constructive assessment of peers. Self-assessment is a skill essential to effective independent learning. The objectives of problem-based learning is to produce learners who will engage the problems they face in life and career with initiative and enthusiasm. Problems solved effectively using an integrated, flexible, and usable knowledge base. Employ effective, self-directed learning skills to continue learning as a lifetime habit, thinking about their thinking, and continuously monitor and assess the adequacy of their knowledge, problem solving, and self-directed learning skills, and collaborate effectively as a member of a group. Thank you.